Okay, so let us next see exercise 6. Now here, just like before, f is a subfield of the field of real numbers and gamma is an element in f that is a positive real number. We have to prove that root gamma is realizable as an intersection of lines and circles in f. So let's start the solution by writing down clearly what that means and what it is that we have to prove. We need to prove that any point in the plane of this extension of f obtained by adjoining root gamma to f is a point of intersection of a line in F and a circle in F. Okay, so that means if we choose any such point in the plane of this uh, extension, then we have to prove that there exists a line in F and a circle in F such that the point becomes a point of intersection of those two objects. Those two objects may have two points of intersection. One of them will be this. Now depending on whether root gamma itself belongs to F or not, there are two cases of which the easier one of course is the one where this belongs to F. So let us consider that case first. If square root of gamma belongs to f then our extension is nothing but f itself because you adjoin any element of f to f you you are not going to get anything new you get f back okay so that means in this case any point in the plane of this is actually any point in the plane of f itself. So let us now consider one such point. Let this be a point in the plane of f. Then our point is a point of intersection of the line x equal to alpha in f and the circle in f whose center is alpha plus 1 comma beta and radius is 1. Okay, so this case is uh, pretty easy. In this case, it turns out that this is the point of intersection of this line and this circle. Now, let's see if that is really the case. 
that's because it's easy to verify also. So we don't know where this point is in the plane, it will depend on alpha and beta, but say the point is here. So this is alpha comma beta. So the line that we are mentioning is the vertical line passing through this point x equal to alpha and the circle is having this point as its center alpha plus 1 comma beta and due to the nature of these coordinates the line passing through these two points will be a horizontal line. So you can understand that if we are talking about this as the center and its radius is 1 because the two points are at a distance 1 from each other so the circle will be something like this. So this line is actually a tangent to the circle at this point. So that means the point after all becomes a point of intersection of this line and the circle. But are these actually lines and circles in F? That also needs to be verified. We know that for that to happen, the line for example should have an equation in which the numbers are coming from F. The coefficient of x is of course one which is in f that is already known but alpha is also in f because it is being chosen from f alpha and beta are both in f and because of that the center also has coordinates which are coming from f and the radius one is also an element in f so just like the line the circle is also a circle in f so this is our first case. Now let's consider the second case in which root of gamma is not in F. Next. let root gamma be not in f. Now here also in the plane of f root gamma we have to consider a point but now the point itself will look somewhat complicated. Why? Well, that's because the general element of this extension looks like this. And uh, do you ever think why that is uh, the case? I mean, why is it that all the elements in this look like this? That's because this is a basis for this vector space over f. It's a two-dimensional extraction. That's why every element in this is a linear combination of these basis elements, which is why the components alpha and beta themselves are coming from F. Just like before also we had alpha and beta coming from F, here also alpha, beta, alpha prime, beta prime, these are coming from F. And in fact, we are not going to mention that. Then, Now the case where beta and beta prime are both zero has already been considered here in that other, in fact that is the other case. 
has already been handled so we assume without loss of generality or without losing generality that beta is non zero say well you can argue once you think about it that it's strictly speaking actually not a loss of generality case but the other case uh, where beta prime is non zero is similar to this one so if you want to see what i am going to write here uh, what the things corresponding to that will be in the case where beta prime is not equal to 0 you are welcome to do that my maybe my choice of words here is not uh, very good but you understand that the other case can be similarly handled in fact that's what i should have written but let's just uh, let's just forget about language let's see the actual thing okay then here also it turns out that our point is a point of intersection of a line in uh, f and a circle in f but now the things are going to be more complicated one can verify and that one is u that our point is a point of intersection box center anyway point of intersection of the line so this is a straight line beta prime x minus beta y plus alpha prime beta minus alpha beta prime equal to 0 and the circle x square plus y square plus dx plus f equal to 0 in f where now we need to say what d and f are where d is defined to be minus 2 alpha minus 2 times alpha prime beta prime divided by beta and f is alpha square minus alpha prime square minus beta square plus beta prime square times gamma plus 2 times alpha alpha prime beta prime divided by beta 
Now verifying these things the first is much more time consuming than the previous one but you are uh, being urged to do that so that I can also know whether these calculations are correct. So the things you have to do here are of course this. You put these values here in place of x, you substitute this, you substitute this for y. The equation of the line should be satisfied as well as the equation of the circle should be satisfied with this d and f, these definitions of d and f. But you can uh, almost uh, immediately see why is it that the line and circle just like before are still objects in F with their usual meaning. Let's see the numbers that are involved. Beta prime, beta, alpha, alpha prime, these are already coming from F we have seen. So beta prime minus beta and this object, this number, they are in F because F is a field. Similarly, here D is also in F. Note that the fact that beta is non-zero, which is what we assumed without loss of generality I was saying, has been used here because we have divided by beta. There is no problem with D. We can immediately see that the ingredients in defining D are coming from F with beta not equal to 0 and the fact that f is a field all these things imply that d belongs to f. In f also almost everything is coming from f but what about gamma? Do not forget that gamma itself is also coming from f. So just like d f is also in capital F. So the circle is also a circle in f. Okay, so you just need to verify that this satisfies both the equations. So that is the solution. Now, all these exercises that we have been solving for quite some time now in this section, they are leading us towards this next theorem which gives us a necessary and sufficient condition for a real number to be constructive. So it's that thing that we are going to see next. The theorem is very important and even more important are its corollaries which we won't see today but in the next update. The real number alpha is constructible if and only if we can find a finite number of again real numbers lambda 1, lambda 2, etc., lambda n, such that these conditions are true. The square of lambda 1 belongs to f0 or f0, which we know is nothing but the field of rational numbers. And number 2, the square of lambda i belongs to this extension of f0 obtained by adjoining the previous lambdas. i minus 1 for 
i itself varying from 1 through n such that it's not over yet because these are some conditions that involve only the lambda i's but what about alpha okay so let us first try to understand what this statement means recall what constructibility means actually what does it mean for a real number to be constructible when we say that alpha is constructible it means that there exist two points in the plane in the 2d euclidean plane that are constructible points and such that the distance between them is the absolute value of alpha that's what it means for the real number alpha to be constructible so what we are saying here is that such a real number is constructible if and only if we can find finitely many real numbers satisfying these conditions such that alpha belongs to this so what what are these conditions the uh, the conditions go in a uh, what can i say a recursive manner like this say just for the sake of understanding say n is 4 in that case uh, how do these conditions look in that case the theorem states that you should be able to find four real numbers such that lambda 1 square belongs to the field of rational numbers lambda 2 square belongs to this extension of the field of rational numbers then lambda 3 square belongs to f of lambda 1 comma lambda 2 and lambda 4 square belongs to this such that your alpha belongs to this extension obtained by adjoining the four of them to the field of rational numbers now the proof of this is there in the text and it appears before the statement itself in fact in the form of a discussion the conclusion of that discussion is stated in the form of this which is this theorem but that discussion although it has all the things that we need in order to conclude this it is somewhat uh, i i should not use the word chaotic but it leaves many details and very casual and informal in nature going through that discussion you will understand uh, somewhat what is going on but if you then go on to put it in words rigorously to write an actual proof you encounter some problems and it's not that straightforward so we need to write an actual proof but that actual proof i won't do today instead uh, let me just uh, tell you how one can do it we are going to do it in the next update so what is it that we have to prove here because we have understood the statement so we know what to prove so in one direction it will be given that lambda uh, sorry alpha is constant i i don't know why i have this bad habit of calling this lambda it is alpha okay if so somewhere else also i have called it lambda then i excuse me 
So in one direction it will be given that alpha is constructible. So you already know what that means. It means existence of two constructible points P and Q such that the distance between them is this. Then you have to prove that such numbers exist. Okay. How? You may think. For that you have to go back to the meaning of constructible points. You recall all the previous definitions. You see before defining constructible numbers properly we went through a series of other things which are geometric in nature. We also properly defined the three types of compass and straight edge operations that are allowed. And while defining those operations, we considered two points P and Q in the plane, which are given in the beginning of everything. Before performing any such operations, we, we are given two such points, which are considered to be at a distance of one from each other. And by definition, these two points, which we there also we called them capital P and capital Q, by definition they are constructible points. And then using these operations, which uh, let us recall what the operations are. One of those operations tells us to draw a line through two given points. Now in the beginning, these are the only two geometric objects we are given, two points at a distance of one from each other. So we can draw a line. By definition, that line is a constructible line. Okay. And then in another operation, we can draw a circle with any point as its center and any Well, uh, how to put it? I mean, uh, I, okay, I should not have said it this way. You take your compass, okay, you adjust its arms so that one arm like this, one arm lies on one constructible point and the other arm lies on the other constructible. That means you, you then have a radius and you are ready to draw a circle with that radius. You put that compass with that much separation between those two ends. You put that compass anywhere in the plane, Euclidean plane and you draw a circle. So you can do that. So that is the second operation and the resulting circle is considered is defined to be a constructible circle. And the third operation is that these objects that you are creating, that you are drawing, they may end up intersecting one another in several different ways, giving rise to points of intersection. Those points are defined to be new constructible points. Okay, so that's how you are going to get more points. And then as this process goes on and on, you get more points, more lines, more circles, all of them by definition are constructible. Now, so that, that means by this definition, in order to get to the point P, one must have had to go through a sequence of finitely many such operations, starting from capital P and capital Q. And also in order to get to the point Q, some such sequence has to be uh, it has to be followed. And that sequence gives rise to these numbers. We will see exactly how. And in all these things, the exercises that we have so far solved in this section, that is, um, we have uh, solved six of them by now. No. One of them says, say, you have a line, 
a line in F, then the numbers arising in its equation, the numbers appearing in its equation must come from F, that is 1. Then you, we have already seen that when a line and a circle in the plane of F intersect, then they intersect at a point which is either in the plane of F or in the plane of some quadratic extension of F. So in those quadratic extension that is say you have a line and a circle both are in the plane of F. These po points of intersection are going to lie in the plane of either F or in the plane of something like this. These gammas are eventually going to end up as squares of these lambdas. That's how the lambdas are going to appear out of these processes. Okay, so that is one direction. And in the other direction, you will be given the lambdas, you will have to prove that alpha is constructible. So that means lambdas are given means such a process is given from that process you will have to geom i mean see the process is given means the geometric process will be given corresponding to these lambdas based on that we will have to show that two such constructible points exist such that the distance between them is absolute value of alpha we will actually uh, do these things okay rigorously writing everything down if you are thinking it's going to be extremely big or unimaginably complicated no it's not actually the thing is a little messy due to the general nature of this process in which there is that no one can say which step is going to appear where it is general you you just know that such a sequence of steps exists and then you have to work with that you have to work with the existence so that's why things get a little messy but once we write things properly once we write them down and once we understand why the things that we have we are going to write are true then everything will fall in place so we will see this okay now after completing the proof of this you will have the theorem and then the theorem itself uh, although it gives us a necessary and sufficient condition for constructibility of a real number, the theorem itself is not of uh, much use, but it has two corollaries, which are far, far more important than the theorem itself. So we will see all these things. So let me end the video here itself, and we will see in the next field theory update. Tomorrow, of course, we have our usual uh, sol solving of exercises and tomorrow we are again going to solve exercises from group exercises from Galleon. So see you tomorrow with that. Until then, this is me, Lucifer from a mathematical group. Have a nice night.